So hi, it's Dave. One of the biggest questions I get asked, or one of the most common questions I get asked is, how do you build an EV car? Now, it's kind of a fairly simple question when you think about it, but it actually gets really complicated very quickly. So the point of this video is to give you an idea, a very high level view of how do you build an EV car? Firstly, space. Not that kind of space, but space to work. You're going to need to store a car for a start, so that takes up a lot of room. And you're going to need to work around the car. You may need a hoist to lift engines in and out and lift heavy materials. So you need a lot of space. Now, you're also going to need to work under the car. I'm not going to go into the details of working safely under a car. Lots of YouTube videos will help you with that. But that is imperative that you stay safe through any project. But space to store a car and work around a car is imperative. The next space consideration is the vehicle that you're going to buy. I would choose something big, something like an old van or a Volvo, because if you choose something small like an MG, then you're just not gonna have the space to work. You're gonna end up with complex fabrications to get battery holders and, and motor holders and motor mounts and much smaller spaces to work with. If you choose something like a van or an old Volvo, you've got all the space in the world and all the flexibility to do things that you need to do, including just putting the batteries in the boot if you need to. It just makes things a lot, lot simpler. So my next top tip is to use a rear wheel drive car just for simplicity. If you imagine in a front wheel drive car, you've got a transaxle that takes the power from the motor and drives the front wheels. You're never going to get an electric motor to be the same size and same orientation to fit in that position, to fit, to drive the transaxle and make it work. It's just fiddly. It's unlikely to happen in any kind of short time scale with a huge amount of planning. If you use a rear wheel drive car, all you have to do is put the EV motor, the electric motor, in position of where your ICE motor is that you're taking out. You can either drive it through the gearbox or straight to the rear differential. Much easier and much simpler. So my next recommendation is that you keep the gearbox. And again, this is all about flexibility and not getting bogged down in the information about what motor you can and can't use. In my first project, I used just a 15 kilowatt electric motor. If I had plumbed that straight into the rear differential, the car would not have been able to move. But because I had the gearbox and the gear ratios within it, I could use my 15 kilowatt motor and have a drivable car in first and second gears. So of course, you need to choose a motor. And I'm not gonna go into the details of which motor you need for your application. Have a look online. There are lots of EV motors to choose from. Pretty much the rule of thumb is, the more money you want to spend, the faster you're going to go. I do recommend that you choose an AC, not a DC motor. AC motors are more efficient, they're more powerful, and you can regeneratively break from them. Most EV motors or AC motors will come with a controller to control them. So make sure that when you're choosing your motor, you've got your matching controller with it. So you've chosen your motor and you need to get it in the car. There are three things you need to do that. The first is an adapter to connect it to your gearbox. If you imagine the output shaft of your motor is not gonna be compatible with the input shaft of your gearbox. It might be a spline, it might be a keyed shaft, and the gearbox, again, could be a spline, could be a keyed shaft. What I tend to do is take the motor and the gearbox to an engineering shop and say, link those together. Most shops will quite happily have the materials and the facilities enabled to do that. Secondly, you need an adapter plate. So you've got your input and output shafts joined together, but there's going to be a gap between the motor and the gearbox, and they're going to move around. They need to be one unit. So you need an adapter plate in the middle. There's going to be a set of holes in it, which will connect it to the EV motor, and a second set of holes, which will link it to the gearbox. So you'll attach it to the EV motor, slot it on and attach it to the gearbox and you've then got one solid unit. The third thing you need once you have that is you'll know where the EV motor is going to sit. So you need to make some engine mounts. Every car will have points in the chassis of where the old motor used to sit and you need to make brackets from those to the sides of your motor so it's being held in place. Now you've got the motor in place adapted to the gearbox which is powering the rear wheels so to make your car go you're going to need batteries now any kind of lithium-ion battery technology run at about four volts and you put all of these into series to increase your voltage to the voltage that your motor and your controller need it's the same in the tesla seen here and it's the same in the nissan leaf shown here and any kind of battery technology whereby you need higher voltages are simply smaller batteries put in series Trust me when I say that the storage of the batteries will be the biggest job of building your EV car. Batteries are big, they're heavy, they need containment, and of course they're very dangerous when you're working with high voltages. So out of the whole project, batteries are really going to be the thing you need to plan 
in advance to make sure you've got space for comes back to what I said earlier about having a vehicle with lots of space. If you've got the space, it makes this part a lot easier. So once you've got your batteries installed, you need to wire them up. And it is quite straightforward. You put negative to negative, positive to positive, but you will need a relay, which is basically a very fast switch, which can turn the high voltage on and off via a 12 volt input. Your 12 volt input can be the ignition of the car, turn the ignition on and the batteries are connected. However, there is a very important thing you need to consider, which is a thing called a pre-charge circuit. Now, what this does is it allows a little bit of charge to go into the controller prior to the main full voltage going in. If you chuck the full 400 volts into, or whatever your voltage is of your car, into the controller, you will blow it up. I won't go into the reasons why, but you just don't need to do it. You need a pre-charge circuit. So you turn your ignition on as a pre-charge circuit, which is basically the same circuit, but with a resistor in there to lower the amount of current that can go into your controller. That will only need probably a second, if that, to pre-charge. It'll get the voltage of the controller up to roughly about the voltage of your batteries. You can then turn on the main circuit and allow all the power through. So you've chosen your car, you've chosen your motor, you've got your motor installed, you've got your batteries installed, you've wired your batteries up, you've got your relay and pre-charge circuits in place. Well, how come you can't drive? Well, one very thing remaining is that you need to connect your throttle up. So your car's gonna have an output and your controller is gonna have an input. They're likely not gonna be compatible. Some controllers you can program to match the output of your car. For the case of my RX-8, I couldn't program my controller and the output of the car's throttle didn't match what the controller needed. So I got an Arduino device and took the input, modulated it to what it needed for the output for the controller. That's probably the most complicated way because you need to know about electronics, you need to know about programming to do that. So my advice is to really find out the controller for the motor that you're getting. What does it need input wise to control the throttle? Have a look at the car you're buying. What is its output? And then try and work out ways that you can make one match the other. So there you go, a very high level top down view of how to build an EV car. Yes, there's lots of things I haven't gone into about voltages and currents and cabling and power and motor outputs and gearbox ratios, drag coefficients, and probably a million other things that need to be considered when you're building an EV car. But as an overall top down view, this video should give you a rough idea of the major components that you need. So thanks for watching. Subscribe and like and all those funky YouTube things. And I'll catch you at my next video.